Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Keeping an Eye on the Geopolitical Ball with me, Jamie Shea, at Friends of Europe. Uh, this week, uh, Tony Blinken, the new US Secretary of State, is in Brussels for his first meetings with NATO, starting now as I speak, uh, and also with the uh, European Union. Now, his boss, Sir Joe Biden, has said some very nice things uh, since being elected about NATO and the uh, EU. But of course, now is the time to go beyond the nice words and see what the United States really wants uh, from these two key uh, institutions of the West. Now, uh, originally, we thought that uh, Afghanistan would be the key item on the agenda uh, because, uh, as you know from my previous uh, broadcasts, by May the 1st, NATO has to decide if it's staying or leaving uh, Afghanistan. But it looks as if that decision is going to be postponed. The US administration is still conducting a review. We'll hear from Blinken about where that's going. But more importantly, the US is now working with the Taliban and the uh, government of President Ghani on more negotiations to see if it can still broker some kind of transitional government, reduction of violence and an orderly transfer of power uh, before the May deadline is reached. So if Afghanistan is no longer ripe yet for a decision, uh, then this gives time for the ministers with Tony Blinken to look uh, at more long range issues. One is going to be Russia. NATO's done a good job at uh, 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 thwarting or deterring uh, any Russian attempt at a conventional attack on a NATO member by deploying uh, uh, extra forces in Poland and the Baltic states. But the problem is still an open one when it comes to hybrid warfare, Russian cyber attacks. Uh, for example, it's been accused of conducting a very large scale attack, solar winds, in the United States this past summer. Uh, espionage. Yesterday, Bulgaria uh, 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 deported uh, two uh, Russian diplomats after discovering a Russian spying in the country. Uh, interference in elections, which uh, President Biden warned President Putin about when they had their uh, phone call. Now, NATO has been dealing with this largely through increasing its resilience to withstand the impact of these kind of attacks. But the United States has been talking about countermeasures, a retaliatory cyber attack, uh, more uh, economic sanctions against Russia, particularly by excluding it from the global payments and banking system, access to the dollar, access to the SWIFT bank clearance transactions scheme, for instance, and both in the EU and in the United States, more use of Magnitsky, as it's called legislation, to put sanctions on individual Russian officials. What's going to be the appetite of the allies for these countermeasures as opposed to resilience? That's the first issue. Second one, unsurprisingly, is China, because, of course, uh, Tony Blinken has spent the last couple of days in Anchorage, Alaska, having his first meeting with the two Chinese senior foreign policy uh, officials. And he'll no doubt give the allies a readout of those uh, uh, meetings. Now, yesterday, something very significant happened in Brussels, which is for, for the first time, Canada, the US, the EU and the UK simultaneously adopted sanctions against four Chinese officials uh, involved in the repression of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. And China has reacted very firmly against uh, that. But beyond these uh, measures, dealing with human rights, what kind of strategic things will Tony Blinken be asking the allies to do? Uh, deploy more ships in the Asia Pacific. The UK has decided to do that uh, as part of its uh, new uh, integrated uh, review. More, be more involved in uh, Asian security uh, arrangements, maybe uh, a, a dialogue with the Quad, the regional arrangement that the US has already set up, or more staying in Europe, but trying to counteract Chinese influence, for example, in technology, or of foreign investments here. Uh, again, uh, let's see what comes out of the uh, meetings. The third issue is Turkey, uh, because uh, this is a preoccupation of the United States, but the EU is holding a summit at the end of the week, immediately after Tony Blinken flies off, uh, to look specifically about Turkey. Uh, there are good signs. The Turks have uh, opening talks with the Greeks on problems in the Eastern Mediterranean and have agreed to host the next big conference on Afghanistan. But there's also been uh, the continuing deployment by Turkey of the Russia-made S-400s. Uh, and last weekend, President Erdogan uh, upsetting a lot of people in Europe and the US by pulling out of the Istanbul Convention, uh, which protects women against all forms of, uh, of violence. So what kind of joint strategy 
strategy would the US and the EU adopt uh, when it comes to embracing a country, which of course is an ally, not an adversary, uh, but which can be problematic in certain regards. And then finally, uh, we'll see what Tony Blinken has to say about the proposals of Jens Stoltenberg, the NATO Secretary General, uh, for uh, turning NATO into a much more Swiss army knife, multi-purpose security organization, embracing Asian security, uh, facing up to the Chinese challenge, looking into space, but also issues like climate change. Will the US go along with that uh, as the main item at the next NATO summit? So lots of big things to talk about, but I have a sneaky suspicion that before Tony Blinken is allowed to leave Brussels, somebody in the EU will whisper in his ear that could he kindly persuade President Biden to release more of the very large US stock of vaccines uh, to uh, Europe to help with the hard-pressed EU effort on vaccine distribution. As you know, the EU feels a bit sore that it has exported 40 million vaccines to other countries, but has received very few uh, back. Uh, that will be, I think, a message where President Biden's Im immediate reaction will say quite something about the health of the transatlantic security relationship. Thank you very much uh, for uh, listening today, and I look forward to engaging with you this time next week.